Okay, you have uh, read a little bit about modeling. You built a model in Excel. Let's go ahead and do some modeling in Azure Machine Learning now. We can start by creating a new pipeline. And we're going to run a regression with the insurance data set, much like you may have with Excel. So the first thing I'll do is I'll give this pipeline a new name. Insurance regression example. I'll add my initials just for the heck of it. All right, so now we need to bring in some data and you might have uh, imported the insurance data set from uh, back when, if not, you can find it in one of the previous reading modules and go ahead and import it. If we look at the data, we can see we've got uh, one, two, three, just seven attributes, age, BMI, and children are numeric, along with charges, which is our label, and then sex, smoker, and region are categorical. So let's keep that in mind as we work our way through. One of the nice things about importing a CSV file is that I can uh, generate a profile of that data that matches a lot of the information that you would see in the summarized data pill. So I get my histogram, I could click on age, and I actually get a box and whiskers plot with the various um, interquartile information. It doesn't calculate my IQR calculated min and max, uh, just gives me an overall min and max. So it's this version of a box and whiskers, not the IQR version. I can also go back to the histogram which I already have over here. And then for a categorical variable, it gives me a value count by category. And if I have more categories, it gives me more bars in my bar chart. All right. And then scroll across, take a look at the various statistical analysis in the profile. All right. So age, BMI, children, and charges. So let's remember that we're going to build a regression. So let's start off by going into our data transformation batch of components. And we'll choose select columns in data set. All right. And the first thing it's going to ask for is, well, what is the column that you're looking for? We can choose them by name. So I want age. I'll bring that in. I want BMI. I want number of children. And I want charges. So I'll save that. And now I can bring those results into the rest of my pipeline. The next thing I want to do is split data. So I'll go back up here and close this folder back up. Now, remember when we are building a model, we don't want to overfit. So by using a good portion of the data to build the model and then holding some of the data out to validate the model, we can address overfitting better than building the model from the entire data set. All right, so let's do a split data. And I'll bring that in. So select columns in data set. Uh, this is a good one to give a name. So we wanted age, BMI, children, and charges. And then I put my group name in and na names of the group members. 
Remember, you can always click on component information and find out more about the pill here on the documentation for that pill. All right, so we're splitting the data and you can see we've got two result sets. So I'm going to uh, take a look at that pill and you can see I've got a number of parameters here that I can set. The first one is, uh, well, what do you want to split? Well, we're going to just split rows. That's fine. What fraction of rows do you want to split? Well, it starts off with a 50-50 split, but we'd rather have 70 to 80% of the data to build the model with. So we'll split the difference there and say 75%, 0.75. Yes, we want a randomized split. We don't want it non-random. Uh, we can add a random seed and I recommend uh, you do start getting in the habit of doing that. Use your group's random seed or your individual random seed for your project work and even for your practice work. And we do not need any stratification here. All right, so we'll go ahead and update the node information so that we know we're doing split data at 75%. And we'll put our group name in again. All right, so we've split the data. We're ready to start modeling. To do that, we want to train our model. So the model training will go down there and we'll just pick the plain train model pill out and we'll connect. You can see we've got an untrained model input port and then a data set input port. So we're going to train the model using this first output port, the first data set coming out of split data. So that's going to be the 75%. And you can see as I start dragging away from that output port, the data set port turns blue, or if you are in light mode, it'll uh, show a little halo around it to let you know that you can connect technically to that port. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that that's what you should do. It just means that Azure Machine Learning says that's acceptable to connect those two ports together. All right, so what do we do with untrained model? Well, we want to apply some type of modeling algorithm here. To do that, we can go into the machine learning algorithms folder and we'll find the linear regression one right here, not too far from the top. And we'll bring that in and you can see I've got an untrained model going out and that conveniently connects to the untrained model input port for my trained model. All right, so let's take a look at trained model the first thing it's looking for is it wants to know, well, what is your label column going to be? So I'll click on uh, column names. And in this case, uh, it's not bringing in the list of names because I haven't run it to this point yet. So I'll type in charges, which is the name of our label. And we can double check that by just going back here and Taking a quick look at our data again. Go to profile. Yeah, charges. All right. So train model, charges. This next one's kind of a fun new, uh, I'm going to say it's a beta feature that machine learning has just added. Model explanations. I'm going to turn this on. It, attempts to provide plain English explanations of how your model works. So that might not be a bad one to uh, utilize and, and take a look at, especially when it comes time to putting your report together for your users, because it may help you come up with uh, good verbiage that can help you explain your model. All right, so we'll go down to our node information, train our regression model. with training data and of course my group information or individual information 
All right, let's take a look at the linear regression next. If we take a look at the parameters here, we can see it provides us four parameters. The first one is ordinary least squares or online gradient descent. Which solution method do we do you want to use? And for the most part, we've been going with OLS as our approach. So let's stick with that. And we can stick with the default for the L2 weight, 0 0.001. Include the intercept term true. You can turn that to false. And what that'll do is it'll force your regression line to go to the XY intersection, which uh, is useful in some regression approaches. But uh, for the most part, we don't mind having an intercept. So let's go ahead and let that be there. We could turn it off later if we need to. And then our random number seed again. Okay. Node information, linear regression with OLS. So at this point, we are ready to train a model. But what do we do with the model when it's done? Well, let's go ahead and keep going then and take the train model that we have built and see if we can use it with this holdout data to see how well we did. So let's do that. We will go to model scoring and evaluation. And you can see I've got score model down here. Let's bring that in. And while we're here, let's go ahead and bring in evaluate model because we're going to use that right after. All right. So let's see what we do with the scored model. So the score model is looking for a trained model, which we just happen to have right above it. So let's bring our newly trained regression model into the score model pill. And it's looking for a data set. And here we'll use the holdout data. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this newly trained regression model and whatever the coefficients happen to be and apply it to this 25% of the data points that we held out and that we haven't used to build the model with. And we'll see what the model predicts for that remaining 25%. The only parameter here is do you want the new score column to be appended to the output? And for our purposes, there's no reason not to leave that at true. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go ahead and update our node information. And then we'll finally take our scored data set and bring that into our evaluate model pill. And you can see there are no parameters for the evaluate model. It automatically understands what type of model has been built, in this case, a regression model. And it will apply the appropriate evaluation techniques and give you evaluation results. So the last thing we'll do is we'll update our node information. And at this point, we're ready to run our pipeline. So let's go ahead and if you don't have auto save on, you might want to go ahead and save your pipeline just in case. And then let's go to the settings and choose a compute instance to run this on, choose uh, I'll just choose the one I happen to have running. Uh, but you, if you haven't, you may need to go and turn one of your compute instances on to run this. Everything else I'll leave as is. So let's go ahead and submit this and see what we get. I will create a new experiment for this, and I will call it uh, basically the same as the pipeline name with no spaces. All right, so we've submitted a job. Here it is running. Let's see how it's doing. I'll go ahead and pause this video for now. You can see we've made a little bit of progress. I'll pause the video until everything's done, and we'll come back and see what we've got.
Okay, looks like things are wrapping up, and they just wrapped up. So here we can take a look, and we can uh, look at our split results. See, we got uh, 1,004 in our first data set. Three hundred thirty-four in our second data set. All right. And that was out of one thousand three hundred thirty-eight total records we had to begin with. All right. Not bad. Let's take a look and see what we get from uh, the linear regression. There's not going to be a whole lot here. It's the untrained model. Nothing much to see there. Now for the train model, let's see what we got from that. If we uh, preview the data, we've got our train model, which we can now look at. What do we have? Well, we've got a number of files that are out there. So really the trained model is really just a set of internal instructions that Azure ML can use if you decide you want to save this trained model and apply it elsewhere. All right. Um, so basically it's going to use that to score the model, but then I could actually save this model, register the model and use it in other pipelines that I create at some point in the future. All right. So let's go look at score model, see what we've got. And the scored data set that comes out includes our original four columns plus a fifth column that is our scored label. Basically, that's the predicted value for our holdout data for our 334. So we can then start to get a feel how well did it do. Well, this one's way over. This one's uh, way under. This one's uh, over, this one's over, this one's over. All right, so hard to tell just based on a quick scan, but we can uh, then go back and evaluate the model by taking a look at the evaluation results. And the evaluation results basically just give us five numbers here. So we've got our coefficient of determination, that's our R squared, and we've got an R squared of 12.1204. All right, so 12% about is explained. We've got an R relative absolute error, relative squared error. We've got our mean absolute error, which we know how to calculate in Excel, 9118.6836. We've got our root mean squared error, RMSE, of 11756.9462. All right, so that gives us a point, and we could copy all these uh, values and start developing a table of our modeling results. So that is building a model uh, in Azure ML. Let's get back to the reading and see what we want to do next.